CC3 beta software. Now, a couple things I want to make sure I get out the way first because it's very easy for, I don't know, it's just the internet. It's very easy for it to be misunderstanding. So, you know, I understand that this is a work in progress. Um, and I'm ex so excited to be part of that um, conversation. I mean, you could, you could be in, in the conversation where you got it or not. It's not about, how, you know, it's about music technology. I've always been a fan of music technology. And I've always been a fan of creating music with cool gear. And, uh, you know, this definitely is a step in the right direction. So I just want to talk about not too long, but the my initial first impression views about the linear arranger. And, you know, I can't I can't look at any DAW right now without comparing it to my experience with record studio one studio one's like my main daw of choice when i record records that's the platform i use that's that's how i get down and but i've had experiences with daws going all the way to cakewalk and there was a program before that called music tracks and i actually used to mess around with this music program on the commodore 64 but that's going way back anyway the thing i want to talk about is where we can approve uh, the uh, the linear arranger. Um, if you saw my live stream, you saw me sort of wrestle with some things. And so I just wanted to summarize some of the things I was wrestling with. And I just want to give kudos to my viewers on that live stream for being very patient with me uh, to communicate with me. And, you know, there's a chat and a delay between what I see and what you guys see and what I hear and what you guys hear. And so just everybody was just mad and mature. So. I love that. And I hope I hope I continue to, I guess, create that kind of environment on my channel. And so back again on the linear arranger. I it very it grew on me very quickly because I did like the bird's eye view, but I did have a learning curve with it. And that's to be understood. It's a new way of manipulating information on the screen. Um, it made, I missed having a mouse and keyboard because in studio one, my chop, 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 move, click, click. And so that's gotta be a very, that's gotta be an interesting challenge. How do you create a seamless integration of a DAW linear experience on a screen, not so big and make it, um, you know, an easy experience. Um, we're spoiled. We have computer screens. I, I'm, I'm extremely fortunate to have three 27 inch screens in front of me that has a lot of screen real estate and I got a, a good mouse, but we're doing things in standalone right on the box. And so it provides a new challenge, a new way of thinking. And one thing I noticed that as far as like manipulating the audio tracks on there, I noticed that one, they had a container and two, they were very easy to slice and split. And the thing is, is with the, when it came to the MIDI, you had MIDI data there that was visible, but you could not manipulate it in the way that you could audio. And this varies differently from my experience with standard DAWs where my MIDI clips are in sort of like this block. And then my audio clips are in blocks. And that's sort of the thing. You could see the waveform, you can see the MIDI data, but they're all contained in blocks that you can slide around and move back and forth and actually drag one block to the other. And I, I'm not expecting that amount of flexibility to drag an audio clip onto the next audio clip, even though that seems pretty rational to do that, or MIDI data and clicking that. It's not like I can control click the MIDI data and drag it up to duplicate it or copy it and make sure it's snapping to the timeline. But I think a step forward and, and I'm really just going into the linear arranger because I was very curious about that is the um, en enabling to to have MIDI inside of these sort of blocks as well. Even if it's like one big block, right? Say like a MIDI drum track was like four bars long and we copy that and duplicate it all the way up to 32 to 128 bars, right? So now we have this big, long block of MIDI data that's repeated. And, 
you know, it'd be cool to be able to go onto that block of MIDI data, data and say, all right, I'm going to cut it here and I'm going to take that edge and trim it back, trim it forward, you know, things like that. Um, and that could be down the pipeline. I, I can't say that that's not going to come to pass. I know from this viewpoint that it's definitely something I'd like to see. I'd like to see that ability to have these, have this media data as easily as manipulate. How do I put this right? I want the media data to be as easy to manipulate as the audio data, right? I like using the, and the loop points, uh, I think are a great tool to indicate where in the timeline you're, you're talking about to the MPC as a sort of a selection tool. And it is kind of a selection tool, but just not fully all the way. So I think there's some gaps to close on there, but I'm very excited um, to see what can happen because all this stuff is possible. Um, that's, to me, this is a very important part of the MPC3 software, okay? And because... If you know me on this channel, I've been on this channel a long time. You've seen me use Machine. You've seen me use FL Studio. If you go far back enough, you might have seen me even touch Reason. The thing that broke, the first straw that broke the camel's back um, in the machine production environment for me was the arranging. Um... I did develop the muscle memory to arrange songs by scene and track and duplicating those pads with the key combinations on the MK shoot on the M machine studio was fun. Well, wasn't quite fun, but I did learn how to do it, but it was not easy. You always kind of think, okay, am I right? So this for me is sort of a very important making or breaking point for this platform, in my opinion, first off, you know, and then this is solely for a conversation and, and feedback and, and all of that. But I do know that for me, one of the breaking points that opened up the door for me to come over to the dark side is the arranger on machine was just not fun. It was not good. And I used to harp on it so much. And I used to make videos about it. And I used to complain. And I tried to get in forums and, and groups. And after a while, it's like, you know what? I'm kind of tired of being angry. Now, I'm not angry now. And I don't think I'm at a place where I would get angry if the implementations I'm talking about never come to pass. I think I think we're past that now, but all these other great features are are great. I love seeing the waveforms, the menu. I'm getting used to that. It's easy to kind of see. Okay, well this goes like this, this goes like that. But that arranger, um, which brings me to another point, that arranger has to be the killer. I mean, I'm not saying have it do magic tricks, but it has to be the killer application for the three. The new coat of paint is amazing. I like that. I think it looks cool. I like the colors. It's stimulating to the eyes. But that arranger has to be next level. And what I mean by next level, not necessarily doing just weird, crazy stuff to your MIDI data or sequences or anything like that or VST3 capable on standalone. No, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is, I think a great starting point is to make that audio as easily manipulatable. I, I got it right earlier in the video. I don't got it right now. So that it can give you that seamless experience. That's what's going to make, that's my prediction. That's going to very much make or break this. But we are in beta. It's not done. It's not done. And I really hope 
that developers are able to code that the communication gets to through leadership. Um, as I work in the corporate field in the daytime, oh my gosh, just the layers of people from the front line to the top of the line. There's so many layers. And it's sometimes the communication gets lost in the layers, not by intention, um, but it's just there's a challenge there. So we, we're good, but we're not, we didn't land. We're good, but we didn't land. And I'm excited to have a conversation with you in the comments below to hear what you think about that. Um, it's a fun time. It's a fun time. It's refreshing to see this push. It's a risk. It's not graceful. I mean, you, you put yourself out there like that. And, you know, I think it takes some skin to really put yourself out there and, you know, hear people complain and hear influencers say this and that and forums say this and that. You know, I, I, I could see that's a that's a tough product. I think it's cool to be honest and respectful. And I and I that's my hope. And I, and I hope I've done that. That's what I've been my my steez because, you know, there's I won't go into that tangent, but I hope that now I used to kind of go crazy a little bit. But now. Nah, now, I just want to see this improve and create a better experience for anybody who puts their their hands on this device and also with other companies who are also in the game as well. And and closing, what broke it for me for a machine was the Enranger. That's what broke it for me. That's why it's still sitting in plastic right now. And the reason it's sitting in plastic right now and it's not in some pawn shop somewhere. It's because there's a part of me. And it's like a mustard seed of faith that still thinks native could, could be. I don't know. I, I, I don't have any connections with any staff at native. But... It's just like, you know, it's just that mustard seed. Faith, like, hmm, what if? But as far as machine 2.15, we regrooving. We in there. All right, this is Delio. Hope you like this type of conversation about these products. I just wanted to voice my opinion on that. I'll see you guys later. Y'all have a great day. And uh, peace.